Hey, good morning, everybody. I uh, just wanted to drop a video. The Lord's been speaking to me this morning, and uh, I just got back from the grocery store, and uh, our grocery stores around here are uh, counting people, only allowing so many people, making you keep distance, um, you know, suggesting you wear a mask. And uh, what, what really got me this morning, there was a man in front of me. I don't know if you guys ever saw the Tim Conway uh, skit where the old man shuffles his feet. You know, there was this old man, probably in his 90s, no mask, shuffling his feet with this look of um, panic on his face, trying to get the things that he needed. And at that time, it gave me a snapshot of the brokenness and the situation that we are in uh, with this COVID-19. For Shane and I, uh, apart from my health, which really isn't from this COVID thing, I mean, there is some, uh, you know, some things coming up that I'll have to be concerned with uh, about it. But other than that, like our life really hasn't changed from our ministry to our work or even our home life. But for this gentleman, you know, I see him out there struggling and trying to get things done on his own. And um, it really broke me, man. I uh, actually I started another video and I, I had stopped it. It wasn't because of the emotion, because um, I'm definitely not afraid to show emotion. But uh, at, at a point, it was almost too much for me to see this guy um, struggling. I wanted to help him, but with social distancing and crossing lines, and I didn't want to get in trouble. It was just crazy. Like I don't know what to say. But um, but within that, so the Lord. Uh, was speaking to me this morning about, uh, you know, so in the midst of this, it's been about a month now since I've been back to Pennsylvania from my trip to Ohio, and that's when things started to close down. And there's probably a lot of us that are saying, like, where's, where's the Lord? Like, what is taking him so long? And the Lord is showing me this morning, John 11, the story of Lazarus. See, the story of Lazarus starts off where uh, Martha and Mary uh, sent, it says to the Lord, they, it says uh, right here, so the sisters went, or, or the sisters sent word to him, to Jesus. It says, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. Uh, that's a very encouraging word. Uh, one, because we know that Jesus loves us, that Jesus loves the world. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believes in him or whosoever believes in him shall have eternal life, but shall not perish or will not perish. So he sent his son uh, because he loved the people in the world. He also loves his church. He calls them beloved. So he, is not, he has not left us alone. He has not... Uh, forsaken us or or any of those things but what i do see uh in this revelation that god is showing is he is definitely prolonging um to make sure that definitely he is dead that that the church the religious part is dead and, uh, and I see that in Lazarus where he delays the story. He delays for a few days and he says to his disciples that he delays for a purpose. He says um, right here when he says, it says, so when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two days longer in a place uh, where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, so let's go to Judea. And uh, I'm just going to keep going here. Okay, let me just find it here. It's in actually uh, verses 14 and 15. So Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. You know, Jesus is the only one who can revive something that's dead. And if it's not completely dead, then it doesn't require Jesus to be revived. See, healing is one thing, but being brought back to life is a whole different situation. There are many stories of people being healed in the Bible and really not returning to the Lord. There's 10 lepers. Uh, there's other stories that Jesus, after people were healed, he said, go and sin no more so nothing worse uh, will happen to you. He says that to a man. So healing sometimes uh, gets us out of the circumstances 
So it's, it's like, Lord, take this from me. And then when it gets taken from us, uh, we tend to forget a little quicker. But when we are dead, good and dead, as a matter of fact, I've used this and everyone knows this. It's not my idea, but in the King James where it says that Lazarus stinketh, like he was dead, dead. But it didn't matter to Jesus because he brought him back to life. And I believe that the delay is for, one, for Christ to be glorified. Two, for what is dead um, to be brought to new life. Not like the old life restored, but to new life. And, you know, in the other, uh, this was John, but in the other stories, I believe that uh, Jesus uh, was delayed uh, with other people. Uh, there's just other things that go on. And, and I see in that s situation where people are trying to bring things back to life in their own strength, in their own power. And it's like CPR and reviving things. Like, you can't keep us out of the church. This is crazy. We need to be in church or we need to be doing this. And I clearly see that God is just wants to spend time with us as individuals, Online church is amazing, and I and I am so grateful that many of you have stepped up and uh, decided to give messages online, uh, that you haven't abandoned your sheep. But in the same token, when we try to force things and try to push them ahead of God's timing, we will completely miss what God is doing. And if we miss what God is doing, uh, we will miss the opportunity to have the, the, the touch of him and his hand and his life to be breathed into us and to be, to be into that purpose. See, there was something about Lazarus uh, that Jesus wanted to do. It says later on that many people started believing because of Lazarus, because they saw the work that he did. And uh, what was crazy when the Lord was showing me after that, um, they wanted to kill, like the Sadducees, I believe it was, wanted to kill, uh, yeah, 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 they wanted to kill Lazarus afterwards because people were believing in him. You know, when, when this is said and done, when the church is revived, when the church, when the church, not every church, listen, there's going to be churches that go back to normal. There's going to be churches that really refused to die uh, but to hold on, to cling to the things that they found dear, uh, those churches will continue. But there will be churches like Lazarus that were good and dead, that Christ called out and brought to life and as a witness to save and to bring people to him, and that he would be glorified in the midst of it. But there will be people like the Sadducees, the Pharisees, or whoever it was that wanted to kill him, um, because it's messing their program up. So it will divide churches uh, between the two. Like, well, who are they? They shut down. They didn't have the faith that we have and uh, all those things. But rest assured that if Jesus can revive Lazarus after being dead for, for several days, four days or something of that sort in the tomb, he can revive the church. And he plans on reviving the church. He will revive the church. Uh, those who are willing to lay down and die, those who are willing to be in the tomb, those who are willing to be wrapped up and written off, but still believe in him, will be rose, uh, will be risen or rose again uh, through the strength of the Lord. Rest assured, he will build a bigger, better church. And I don't mean bigger, meaning bigger building and more people, but a church with more influence, a church with more authority, and a church with more anointing, and more fruit, and one that's legitimate, one that he put his life into. So I would encourage you to go in and read the story of Lazarus today and uh, see how it relates to you. See if you are willing to be Lazarus, uh, waiting in the tomb for the voice of Jesus to call you out. As we're locked up in this COVID-19, I just want to speak that there is a, a hope and encouragement on the way. Jesus has not forgot about us. Jesus may be delayed, but he knows he's delayed. No one is keeping him uh, from saving us except for himself. There is nobody holding back the Lord of Lords or the King of Kings. He is on the way to rescue us. And after that, we do have a mission 
So hang on, rest, whatever you need to do, rest in him, seek him, but know that when he calls your voice, get up and head out and do what he calls you to do. So guys, I just thank you for watching. I hope this makes sense. Uh, I've been a little off with my health, um, so hopefully that doesn't throw things off. But in the same token, God can work through anything. It's not about me, it's about him. So may his spirit reveal to you what he's trying to say. And uh, yeah, hang in there, be blessed, and Jesus is on the way. All right, guys. Looking forward to when we all can come back together and uh, have new life like Lazarus. And, and uh, yeah, it'll be good. God is good and he is uh, here for us. All right, guys, be blessed and I'll talk to you later.